Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to be making a neck knife with a twist. It's going to be a mini cleaver. So I guarantee that this will be the cutest cleaver you've ever seen. It's going to be made out of 1084 blade steel from Aldo at New Jersey Steel Baron. And we're going to use Osage, Osage Orange Wood from Pops Knife Supply for the handle scales. The handles are going to be attached to the tang with brass Corby fasteners and G-Flex epoxy. So that's the knife we're going to be making today. Uh, if you all have any questions or comments during the build, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And also, I'm kind of curious on what y'all's feel is in general on a neck knife. Do you see yourself ever carrying a neck knife? Are they practical? Uh, if they are, why? If they aren't, why? Go ahead and drop those uh, comments down below too. And we can start a discussion on neck knives in general in the comment section. So I'm gonna let y'all go. From this point forward, we're gonna move in to narration and continue on with the build. So I hope y'all like it. So what y'all have seen up to this point is just profiling out the blade. Uh, we brought it over to the mini mill here and we drilled two number 13 holes for our Corby fasteners and then some weight reduction holes there in the center. Also gives a spot there in the center for the epoxy to kind of move around while we're attaching the handle scales. Then uh, we center line scribed the uh, edge there with the center line scribe that we built in the last video. That allows us to grind to a centered edge, which is excellent. It's required essentially on a custom handmade knife, actually on any knife, uh, you want to have your edge in the center. So that center line scribe helps us do that. I also scribed in the bevel lines uh, to give us an upper spot to grind to. So I started off with the jig there and something just wasn't feeling right. So I decided to go to freehand on that remaining bevel and then to start this the uh, the other side uh, completely freehand and it, it worked out pretty good. Uh, I'm getting better at not using the bevel jig. There's nothing wrong with the bevel jig but for fine details I'm finding that I like doing it by hand better. So I got some rough grinds in there with a 120 grit belt. You can see they weren't perfectly straight yet but we're gonna go and clean that up later after the heat treat. I wanted to leave a little bit of meat on the blade here we are doing two normalizing cycles, so we'll get it up to around 15, 1550, uh, and then let it cool to room temperature. And then I was warming my quench oil there, canola oil, to 120 degrees F with a piece of hot steel. So we eased the forge up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and quenched it. File tested, and you can see I was kind of doing a batch of blades here. We put them all in the tempering oven, the PID control tempering oven here, and tempered them at 410 degrees Fahrenheit, or 210 degrees Celsius, for two hours for two cycles each. So that's two two-hour cycles of tempering. After tempering, we brought the blade over here to the belt sander and started cleaning it up. Uh, we put another 120 grit belt on there, and we're just getting off uh, all the crud from the heat treating. And also I'm working that bevel up closer to the spine of the knife. Ended up going with a full flat grind on this blade. So at first, you know, I, I thought I was going to come over here to hand sanding and with 320 and, and blend it all together. And then it uh, ended up just not liking the way it was working out for me. Um, I don't know, something didn't seem right. It, I had some pretty big scratches still in there and it was driving me nuts and I was trying to get in that plunge line. So what I ended up doing is I decided to move on back to the belt sander and work up to a 400 grit J-Flex belt on the belt sander and then uh, hit it with a, a fine, or I think it's actually a medium Scotch-Brite belt. And that really uh, helped smooth everything out. So I got it up to a full flat grind with 400 and then hit it with this Scotch-Brite belt. And I really liked the way that turned out. So that's it right there. So pretty darn good, a pretty nice uh, machine satin finish. I was ha really happy with that. So I moved on to etching. A uh, little preview there, that's an etching machine I built. I'll be doing a, a full DIY video on building your own etching machine. But I etched in my stencil here, which is just Jake Eaton Knives. 
And then I actually brought it back over to the belt sander and hit it with that scotch Brite belt again to clean up the edge. Actually, that's me hitting it with steel wool, but I hit it with that scotch Brite belt and then we brought it to the ferrochloric acid for 11 minutes and then uh, cleaned it up with some, with some uh, steel wool and shook it in our, our hand rock tumbler here to get a nice uh, stone wash finish. So while that's done, I uh, moved on to the handle scales. We're going to be using some Osage Orange Wood from Pops Knife Supply. It comes a little thicker than I like to use, so I took a router bit, put it on my mini mill, and brought these scales down to a quarter of an inch. Now the nice thing is, with such a small knife, I'll be able to use just one scale, and I could probably do two knives with this one scale, uh, since the handles are so little. This handle design, by the way, is uh, the same handle design from Walter Sol uh, Solro Soros. I've, I've probably got his name wrong there, I'm, I apologize. It's the same handle design from his hawk feather knife. So we got our handle scales uh, milled flat and cut out. Now we're going to clamp them on to our blade and drill our holes through. So we're using the blade as a drill guide there. Rough cut out the profile of the handle scales. And then we're going to work on the front of the handle scales and get that bevel in there on the front of our scales. I'm using a 2x4 cut at a 45 degree angle and I'm getting the bevels probably about a sixteenth away from the inside flats of the handle scales. After that we get it clamped up to the workbench there, clean up the front of the scales to a 600 grit uh, hand finish. And then I'm using this uh, step drill from Pops which has been awesome. I love this thing. It's uh, getting my counter sinks for my Corby's way cleaner and uh, a lot better than my handmade or homemade model. So with two quarter inch scales and an eighth of an inch blade steel, we want the inside to inside head distance between our Corby's to be around a quarter of an inch. So we shorten the Corby's and then head on over to the glue up uh, where we pour out some G-Flex epoxy from West Systems and just coat the all, pretty much all the mating surfaces here. After we get the uh, scales together, I go ahead and lightly tighten them up with two screwdrivers. You don't want to get out of hand here because you don't want to squeeze all of the glue out of your joint, but you do want them to be uh, snug, I guess would be the right word. I can't give you an inch pound number, but uh, snug. <laughs> that works pretty good. And then wrap it up with wax paper so it won't drip all over the table. And then clean up the front of the handle scales while the glue is still uh, wet. Make sure none of that epoxy is on your blade. To do the handle scales, I bring my grinder down to about 30% there. And I get a fresh 60 grit aluminum oxide uh, belt that has a X weight backing and just do some of the rough profiling of the handle scales. I'm trying to get it really close to the metal, but I'd rather not have it touch the metal just because that 60 grit uh, bell will put some pretty heavy scratches in there. Using a little small wheel here where we're able to get into those uh, finger, finger grooves. You can see me rounding uh, the handle here. This is helping us get that round shape and then we'll knock those corners off next with a scalloped one inch uh, belt with a J-Flex backing. Those belts are, are actually super handy. I'm starting, uh, I used to go to a 120 scalloped one inch but now I'm starting with a 220 just because the 120 scratches can be kind of hard to get out. And now we're transitioning over to the hand sanding. I get I start off with uh, around a 300 grit and I get this one up to about a 600 grit finish on the handle. So for a neck knife we're going to need a, a necklace sheath. We've got two small pieces of kydex there. Heat it up to around 285 degrees Fahrenheit. Got them smashed in the press. And then we marked out our holes and drilled some quarter inch holes for our eyelets. 
Side note, make sure you get your eyelets from a good American source. The Chinese eyelets seem to crush on me whenever I'm trying to close those things up. So a good source would be DIY holsters. That's where I got my eyelets from and they do great. And those are actually their eyelet dies as well. And then I brought this thing over to my Edge Pro clone. I have some diamond stones, starting with a 120 grit diamond stone and then moved up to a 400 grit stone. Then we strapped the blade on some leather. And this blade actually was came out really sharp. Um, I didn't show all my cut testing here, but it, it was really sharp. So this is how it looks uh, when you're carrying it. And if you want to access it, you just yank it down. And that is a mini cleaver neck knife. Thanks you guys for watching. If you've got any questions, put them below. If you got any opinions on neck knives, also put that below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Till the next time.